Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. Coming up on the show this week, we've got a new bike from Canyon, we've got a new bike from BMC, we've got a new smart trainer from Zwift, we've got comments of the week, and the bike vault. Oh, fantastic. Also, for our main talking point this week, we are going to be discussing if gravel-specific parts, components, group sets, and all of that jazz is really actually needed. Is gravel a hoax? I don't know. Let's discuss this. All right, first up, Alex, I want to know your thoughts on what you think about gravel-specific group sets, because for me, I've never used anything apart from gravel-specific kit Okay. gravel. Right, yeah, I know what you mean. So the reason I kind of... Well, the reason I first got onto the subject is this. We had the Gravel World Champs the weekend, and I saw that there's been like a huge mix of different stuff being mm. used by lots of different people. It feels like we've got some people using gravel frame sets, some people trying to use like all road frames, some using road frames. In terms of wheels, we've got road wheels, gravel wheels, group sets, we've got road group sets, mountain bike group sets, gravel group sets. We've got people using road and mountain bike, road and gravel, mountain bike and gravel, gravel and road. Confused think, me already. I think I've said all of the different combinations <laughs> you could possibly think yeah. of there. And yeah, it kind of led me to the thing of thinking, well, if people are using all this stuff, like, do we need gravel specific stuff? Like, mm. is it actually a thing that everyone it needs? It is a good point, but I feel, especially at the gravel worlds, you have such a mix of people. Like, you have the pure gravel riders who mm -hmm. just do gravel. You have, obviously, the road riders who do road for most of the year, then they just step into gravel. And then you've got some, like, mountain bike and cyclocross riders all coming together, and they're all trying to make the best bike for them, They're trying I guess. to, like, meet in the middle, yeah, basically. Yeah, pretty much. But on the Gravel yeah. World Championships topic, yeah. let's have a little run-through of the top three. But bef before we get onto that, yeah. let's just address the fact that how sad was it that the women's race wasn't shown on oh, TV? I was actually racking my brains to see what you were about to address then. Yeah, it's genuinely like, like heartbreaking. Really, really disappointed yeah, I'm, in that. Because, I'm gutted because I wanted to see like more cool gravel race yeah. action. And you, and you, like, obviously you just see photos from the finish and yeah. you see like little clips that people have taken and it looked like such a cool race yeah. for the women especially. Um, well, anyway. there's room for improvement, that's for blue. Oh, sure. there's a lot of room for improvement, yeah. let me tell you. Anyway. We don't um, want to rant about that, do we? <laughs> no, but we, we will. Did. Yeah. <laughs> On the women's side, obviously we had Cassia Numadoma in first place, Sylvia Persico second and Demi Vollering in third, all road riders. Yeah, for, good point. For one. So, um, Cassia used the Canyon Grail SRAM 1 by, and this was the brand new bike, and it looked super cool. Yeah. So, really loved the colours. And then Sylvia used the Colnago G3X Shimano, Shimano D Race uh, 2 by, and then. That was like a mix, wasn't it? It was like a mix of Dura Ace road components and like Dura yeah. Ace gravel stuff. Interesting. And then Demi used the Specialized Crux SRAM 2 by. Interesting choices, yeah. uh, and again, it, it basically like mirrors what I've just said. We've got people using one by two by road stuff, gravel stuff. It'll be really interesting to know, obviously, for like road races and TT and stuff on the track. People do so much research into, yeah. you know, having the best kit. Whether they put, you know, time aside. Is there loads of research going into this, or are they just going? I think I want to use this. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. All right. I'm not sure. Um, well, on the men's side of things, uh, Matej Mohoric was first. We had Florian Vermersch in second, Connor Swift repping for the Brits in third. Um, in terms of the setups they were using, Mohoric was on a what appears to potentially be an unreleased Merida. Ooh. I think it's a Silex. I mean, it's written on the side of the frame, so you assume <laughs> so. Um, but quite different to the original one. I guess details will emerge as to a um, bit more about that bike ever so, so soon. But he was using like road wheels on it and Shimano 2x Dura Ace road group set. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Second place was Florian Vermersch on the uh, BMC gravel bike using Shimano GRX, like just straight through, nice. I think, anyway. Um, and then Connor Swift, interestingly, he had the choice, right, get this, between the Pinarello Grevel, their like racy gravel bike, and the Pinarello X, which is the brand new sort of like endurance all road do it all bike. And he chose to race on the X, which interesting. is an interesting do think, choice. Do you think that's because maybe. Again, road rider, he's just used to that kind of like geometry and setter. Or... Well, I mean, I don't actually know, um, but quite literally, Ollie messaged me this morning. He was like, make sure you mention that he chose to use the, the Pinarello X 
over the Greville, and it was a bit of a like last minute way up between the two. He just banged a set of forty mil tyres in there. And interesting though, because the Greville, the X is only actually technically rated up to thirty five mil tyre, so it's not going to have much room for clearance no. in there. But I guess with the race, obviously it was in Italy, it wasn't wet. No. Whereas probably in the UK, you might not be able to do that because. You've got to have space for mud. I mean, in the UK, our gravel racing and riding is typically quite a lot muddier. Yeah, Um, very different. Lots of people, actually. I think the common theme amongst tyres was that 40 mil was kind of like generally what most people were riding. I guess the idea, a bit more focus on speed rather than like comfort. They were quite quite slick as well, weren't they? Some people are actually riding almost a totally slick tyre. Really? Which is bonkers. Yeah. Um, I've seen loads of different mix of other stuff, like I've already mentioned, mountain bike and road group sets being combined together. A lot of SRAM supported riders using like one by road aero chain ring and then at the back using that massive mountain mm. bike cassette with a like mountain bike drill, like a 10 all the way up to a 52. Yeah, there were some really steep sections. Yeah, so in, I guess on that's... The course, so. I guess that's why they're trying to get that huge yeah. range of gears. But then it is good that you can do that. Like, oh, it on, is good. On a bike. Well, I just it just it just makes it, I feel like it makes people then question. Yeah. And again, like, what's the, the gravel the, stuff for? The pedals as well. Yeah. Road pedals were being used. Again, I feel like in the like yes, you might be able to do it in Italy, but in the UK couldn't risk it because if you mud. had to unclip, yeah, you just wouldn't clip back in cuz your foot just gets clogged up in mud. But there, I mean, if you're used to the road pedals. Yeah. Why not use them? Yeah, I'm with you on that, actually. I guess it really does change drastically whether you're like doing gravel racing or gravel riding yeah. and things like bike packing and, and stuff like that. Well, I mean, we can hear everyone else's thoughts yeah. there. So, yeah, please let us know in the comments section down below what your thoughts are on gravel-specific stuff. But also, um, we got loads of really interesting articles over on the GCN website all about lots of the different bikes and stuff. A couple that have stood out to me. Um, first one, should I, I picked out, should I go first? Go on, Alex. Thanks, I need to share. Um, there was the Santa Cruz Stigma, Stigmata. Stigmata? I don't really know how you say it. Do you know, how would you pronounce that? There, Stig, Stigmata? Stigmata, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I'm probably not the right person. Um, anyway, but. it's from, from, from <laughs> Keegan Swenson from the US. Um, loads of different stuff all about this bike. We'll have a picture up on screen now because it's quite different to the usual gravel bike setup. Like you've mentioned, road pedals, slick tyres, bar like a tiny little bit of tread pattern on them. These are 40 mil wide um, from Maxis. Road chainring, 48 teeth. Aero chainring catcher. Mountain bike derailleur and cassette. And interestingly, no like aero out front head unit mount. It was like on top of the stem. Oh, really? Which for a bike that's like trying to go fast, I think, why would you not make that? That bit, seems a, a very bit weird. Slicker. Do you reckon it's a... Uh... Maybe just forgot the mount or something. <laughs> I mean, maybe. <laughs> maybe know. it is as simple as that. <laughs> Literally. Um, yeah. All right, yeah. I also wanted to pick out Sofia Gomez's uh, specialised crux, um, and she had a 44 tooth one by chain ring. She also had a cage cane check catcher and a 10 by 52 tooth SRAM Eagle mountain bike cassette and derailleur. And that cassette was like a dinner plate on yeah, the back. Yeah, massive. It? It it's huge. like 52 teeth for a cassette. It's yeah. ridiculous. But even like looking at that bike from afar, yeah. it looks like a road bike. It does. That like. is a really good point, I suppose. The Specialized Crux originally started life as their cyclocross bike, and then they've kind of like evolved it into this really uber lightweight gravel bike. But like you say, I think, at a quick glance, you're just gonna go, well, it's like a road bike. Yeah. <laughs> but it's cool, nonetheless. Yeah. Um, well, anyway, we've sort of shared some of our best bits and picks from the Gravel World Championships, and also, uh, I just wanna share my thoughts quickly. Gravel components, yes, I think, they are relevant. Do you need them? Potentially not, but I think far more relevant to your everyday rider and everyday person than what they are for like top level pros who yeah. are just specifically focused on racing and literally get everything for free. So it gets trashed. They're just like, cool, new one, thanks. Yeah, I feel like that's probably quite a high <laughs> risk of breaking. Yeah, like the robust element yeah. is really good for your everyday yeah. person. Um, as I said, let us know in the comments section down below. Boom. Now time for hot and spicy tech. Manon has said that two or three other times before, so hopefully we feel good and we can put them in now. It's now. T- oh. <laughs> you I want to, to say this time hot and spicy tech. <laughs> I want to do something spicy, but very hot and hot and spicy. It's time for hot and spicy tech. <laughs> Can't do that. <laughs> I- 
I was just trying to spice it up. It was great. I loved it. But it's what this show much. needs more spice it up. Ollie Everybody needs do more it. spice. Yeah, you're not um, getting any spice from him, are you? <laughs> he's, he's a no spice kind of guy. <laughs> he's a calmer. Love you, Ollie. Uh, first thing we, we want to mention in Hot Tech this week is Canyon have just released an updated Grail. Um, we actually have a video dedicated, like taking a first look at that bike over and out on GCN Tech right now. Um, so very, very convenient they sent, sent it in size size. I can go one step better than that. They also sent a second in my size. <laughs> There's not a third in your size, unfortunately. Mine or Hank's size. <laughs> yeah. But, you know. <laughs> one day. Ask nicely. Well, the reason they sent two, I'll, I'll change the order of how I was going to go through this, but never mind. Oh, cool. The reason they sent two is because Cy and I did um, an FKT the other week he where did. we rode from... Clevedon to Bournemouth, trying to get the fastest time. Spoiler alert, we probably have because I don't think anyone else has ridden that route. Anyway, another <laughs> cool video out on GCN this weekend if you want to see the bike in action. Anyway, back to the bike now that you um, know we've ridden it. Um, so the Grail was released quite a few years ago and it was released with that like hover bar, which Canyon say broke the internet. Um, However, the hover bar is no more. It's gone. We've got a completely revised new handlebar cockpit area, like new shapes and profiles with a frame and the tubes. It feels a little bit more now like the Grail is a combination of the original Grail and like a sprinkling of Canyon Ultimate mixed in. I guess that takes us back to our main talking point, doesn't it? Yeah, it kind of <laughs> does. Yeah, um, so Canyon have said that this is like a gravel performance bike designed to go fast, get you at the front and the pointy end of the race. Um, and it's also trying to broaden the gap between the Grizzle, which is their like adventure -y, bit more extreme gravel bike, and the, the Grail, which is a bit more race orientated. And um, race orientated it is. Where, who, what bike was ridden to the victory in the women's race? Well, Cassidy and Madonna rode that exact bike. There Held we go. it up in the air in the finish line, showed it off. <laughs> yeah. It definitely was at the pointy end of the race, so shows it is very fast, but then she is quite fast as well. Yeah, um, if you don't want to see the first little video, I can tell you some of the head headline stats now. New handlebar design, new frame design, mega slick integrated storage. It's got aero handlebar integration, and also you can get mud guards and aero storage mountings on it, I can't think of the right word, but basically integrated frame bags which make the bike even more aero by one watt. Yeah, I did see the mud guards on it on the bike the other day and not usually a fan of mud guards, but they looked like neat, slick mud guards. So you're a fan of them in this instance? Yes. All right, cool. Um, next up in Hot Tech, we have some Zwift news. I think you know all about it. Well, yeah, we actually have to head off to future slash... Past. To, part, to past Manon. <laughs> for an update. Over to you, Manon. Hi, GCN Tech Show, and hi, Manon and Alex. I have just been filming a very exciting new trainer. Now, this is the Zwift Hub One, and as you might notice, it looks completely different to any other ordinary trainer because it hasn't got a cassette. It's just got one single cog, and that is the Zwift Cog. But I've just finished filming a very exciting new video where I explain everything about the trainer, so make sure to go and check it out. Great job, Manon. Thank you for that update. <laughs> right. Um, I kind of like lost for words on that. I really Why? hope it was just, yeah. I don't know. I just hope it was amazing. It was. Well, it was great. Um, right. Finally, in Hot Tech this week, BMC have launched a new bike. It's the Team Machine R. Um, this is a bike that has been the culmination of the work between BMC and Red Bull Advanced Technologies, which is a sort of like subdivision of the Formula One team. You know basically. it's going to be fast when... It's a collab with yeah, so an F1. BMC are calling it the ultimate race bike, and they've set out to create a bike which they say perfectly combines weight, aerodynamics, and power transfer. And it kind of falls in line with what a lot of brands are doing at the moment, which is trying to create a lightweight aero bike, kind of like one bike to do everything. Which I think is kind of cool. Um, in terms of weight, well, 910 grams for the frame, 345 grams for the fork. That's in a size 54. And BMC is saying it allows a fully built bike to weigh in at 7 kilograms. Not bad. Which is pretty cool. Not bad. Um, now, I don't know if you recall on the Speed Machine, which launched fairly recently, had a like revised fork, which we had the really wide mm. fork legs and the crown. So then we've got like the carryover, pretty much similar design to this, and they're calling it the Halo Fork. Um, 
so it falls in line with the trend of what lots of brands have been doing. We've seen it on the track as well. Yeah. Um, go it. wide fork legs, trying to help with the aero. I wonder if we'll see that transfer over to more road bikes. <laughs> Give it a couple of years, we'll see it on gravel what, bikes. What, what, yeah. <laughs> what do you think of the that kind of design? Because it's not... Like the wide yeah, stance. Yeah, I can't decide, because it doesn't really look like a bike, does it? I think aesthetically, it's going to take some time for people to get yeah. used to, but I get it from like a functionality and aerodynamics yeah. point of view in terms of its, well, the research behind it is what's actually partly led from the Red Bull Advanced Technologies yeah. bit. They've done way more um, CFD wind tunnel testing than what bike brands would typically do, trying to optimise a lot of that stuff. Interesting. Um, Price-wise, quick run through, we'll have all the prices up on screen, but for the range topping Team Machine R01 Limited, which is SRAM Red, um, you're looking at around $14,999 slash euros. It's up there with top spec bikes, isn't that it? That is, yeah. Um, right, more hot tech next week. It's now time for comments of the week. Man on, over to you. Well, first of all, you and Ollie stirred up quite something <laughs> on the tech show last week, didn't oh, you? We had quite God. a few mixed comments. And for those of you who didn't watch the tech show, you basically rated influencers' bikes in like a bike vault style. And I feel like the OG tech channel viewers will know exactly what it is. It is a bike vault. It's a bit of fun. We either rate your bike a nice or a super nice. We're pretty picky, quite controversial with it. Yeah. But you know, it is, at the end of the day, it's fun. A bit of fun. I said at the start of the show last week, like the bike vault, but a bit more controversial. Look, we all love bikes, we all love cycling. Have your bike however you like it. We're trying to have a bit of fun. Some people got it and loved it. Yeah. Other people took something about a bike and turned it into something personal. It's not. Trust no. me. I'm actually a really nice person if you get to know yeah. me. <laughs> it's not. Why do you laugh? <laughs> don't laugh at that. Whatever. No. All right, yeah, we, don't, we didn't set out to genuinely offend anybody. So if you were offended, I'm sorry. Yeah, mm. but basically, every, yeah, every, every bike in a picture is nice. There's but, no other option. It's either but, nice or it's super nice. But we, yeah, we just, we just pick it out and see what bits <laughs> you can improve for next time. Yeah. But anyway, let's get on to the comments <laughs> this week. Yeah. Um, so under the show as well, we had yeah. a few comments about the crowd. So Dave commented, the crowd was way bigger than I expected for GCN. Tech show, the autograph session must have lasted forever. Yeah. And if we can just play that clip, because the crowd was <laughs> yeah. crazy. Cue the clip of the crowd. Woohoo! Oh, uh, yeah. Woo! Um, <laughs> the other comment underneath the show is from um, Hen Hendrick, whatever. Um, the boys did the bike vault dirty. They clearly forgot the belt and had to circumvent that. They just gave nices all round. Yeah, we did. I didn't even realise that was a thing. Are you sure? No, we didn't. Did you do we just, to, we did genuinely you, just happened to did give nices. Did you get there and be like, around. oh no, we forgot the bell. Forgot to take the bell to Mallorca. Let's just, let's just nice them all. No, because I have a travel bell. That I take with me in all situations in case it, I have to you, rate any bike. You bikes. can't have a travel bell. <laughs> it has to be the GCN bike vault bell. Okay. Belt. All right. Um, it was just coincidence. Underneath Connor's bike packing essentials video, um, Strawhorn One says that was a great video and covered pretty much everything except one. We didn't get to see all of that kit packed onto a bike, and it looks like it probably wouldn't fit. Most of us don't have an El Alto sized bike to fit the things on, and they said they're bike packing for them and the kids next year. Thanks for all the adventures and kit content. No worries. I feel like this, like Connor, is has got quite an advantage because he has such a big bike that he can, you know, fit so much more. Counter argument the... that though, all of his clothes and stuff are massive. It's not that much bigger. <laughs> but the, the other the other day we did um, a challenge, which is coming out on the GCN channel soon, where basically Connor had to ride my bike. And he had, I don't know why Connor has such big bottles, but the bottle was like that big and it only just about fitted in my frame. <laughs> but then on Connor's bike, it just looked like a normal sized bottle. It was very bizarre. I can, I'm genuinely excited to see this. Yeah, it's going to be a good um, one. B um, DK2116 says, how do you secure your bike and gear overnight if travelling solo? I've got a little interest in where Go on, Alex. It. Back when I was a wee nipper, little kid, <laughs> mountain biking. Um, one of my mates used to go uh, as well. They would go camping with like, his dad. And I think his dad used to basically tie a bit of rope or string round the bike that was in the tent and then tie it round his ankle. <laughs> so that if, if somebody broke, like, broke into the tent and tried to run off with the bike, he was like attached to it. <laughs> I just imagine someone like 
Just taking a bike and then yeah. him just like by his ankle. There's probably there's probably been some advancements in bike I don't know, storage that's pr- solutions. That's a pretty then. pretty good way to make sure your bike doesn't get stolen. Yeah, I mean, what's a bit of rope cost? A couple of pound. If that. Job done. Yeah. Um, what else have we got on the inner so, tube video? And, yeah, and inner tube videos. And someone commented, uranium. Five six nine four. The reason why I've never tried tubeless tyres on my bike is because of the sealant you have to use. If we were ever to get tubeless tyres for bikes in the same manner like we have tubeless tyres for cars, then I would happily try them. Until then, it would be tyres with inner tubes for eternity. That technology exists. Yeah. I mentioned it in a tech show, I think, two or three weeks ago. Hutchinson have just developed a, like endurance training all-round tyre. Um, with a butyl liner in it that doesn't require sealant. So the stuff's out there. Yeah, try and, it out. Yeah, try it out. And it'd be interesting to see if that technology carries on into like other performance-related tyres. Yeah, well. very interesting. And BT Cycle says, I'm a techie person and don't mind using tubeless, but I understand those sticking with tubes because the hassle and mess. It's your bike. Set it up however you like. Yeah. Couldn't have said it better myself. They all do the same job at the end of the yeah. day, don't they? Um, which leads us on to the bike vault, which is my favourite part of the show. Manon, you can just take charge of the bell, whatever. Yeah, sure. Um, the most super nice from last week is this incredible looking machine from Mitch Six. It's a Riley. I'm assuming it's titanium. That is a work of art. Yes. That, yeah. is, that is stunning. That is one of the sickest bikes I've seen for a long time. That is... Everything has been thought about. Do you know the... what? I'm going to go onto the GCN app immediately after we film the show and I'm going to super nice that. So like, if we all get behind it, we can keep it going for a second week. <laughs> Do you reckon it could? <laughs> Come on, guys, get behind this bike. Get it in for a second week. Yeah, I mean, I'd happily have that as a super nice next week. The um, chain. Yeah. Oh. Everything about it. Yeah, I... even like the bar tape. I, I don't think I can fault it. No, there is nothing to fault. Um, go on, stand. ring the bell, though, will you? Shadow stand would oh, yeah. be nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a super nice. <laughs> right, first up this week, Photoron with a Lynxy uh, back road from 2022. This is also a sick-looking bike. Do you know what I don't like? Go on. The gubbins underneath the down tube. Ah, oh, like extra storage. Tiny. Yeah. Interesting. I was considering whether to put a bottle cage down there on my bike for when Chloe and I go and do the Big Sugar Gravel race next week. Maybe I won't now. You've said you hate it. What are you going to put in there? Well, I was going to see if I could fit an extra water bottle under there, but then oh, it's going to just all get all the, the, all the oh. crap's going to go all over it. If you drink from that bottle, just you're not death. making it to the finish. Imminent line. death. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, That's it's nice or then. super nice. Um, obviously we have the bag on the top. Yeah. Apart from that, I think, and, and obviously the bottle underneath, but it's pretty spot on for my liking. I'm going to supernise it. I yeah. like it. Yeah, go on, ring the bell. Ring the bell. <laughs> um, next in, Cyclo XR with an Orbea Terra. What do you make of it? Ooh, very nice bike. I do like the colours, very out there. Probably a bit either, those colours, I feel. Um, yeah. Apart from that, unfortunately for me, it is only a nice. There is quite a few things going on <laughs> yeah. that I'm not a massive fan of. Go on, talk um, through it. Okay, first of all, the wall's giving me anxiety. What if it slips and scratch? The pedals, the chain, the bags could... I mean, the, the view is all right. Yeah. But could do better. Nine out of ten on the view? Nine out of ten on the view. Five out of ten Five on the out bike. of ten for the bike. We <clears> just nice. need to tidy it up. Yeah. Who have we got in next? Uh, we have Rob54613 with a Planet X. Wow. wow. This is like a time drop look bike. At the, look at the drop with... from the saddle front to the bars. Yeah. Let me just do a, a mini bit of research. Yes, my mini research has concluded the answer. It is a time trial bike with drop bars. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I... That looks very stiff. <laughs> it looks absolutely <laughs> like it would be awful to ride. Yeah. But it looks rapid as anything. I feel like if you're doing a time trial, I guess it is a time trial, but a time trial unit on a road bike. <laughs> yeah, and you're on like t- a road bike time trial. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it would be good. Yeah, but I wouldn't right. want to ride miles and miles on that. No, but I'm going to throw it out there. I could probably get on board with giving that a I'm going nice. to throw it out there that the handlebars are leaning on the posts. <laughs> yeah, they are. That gives me even more anxiety. 
All right, it's just a nice, actually. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, really that is Sorry. risky business. <clears throat> um, Kiki's next, uh, Propel from Giant SL0. This so, is nice. Might what even be is a super the nice. sort of painting on the wall in the background? I'm not sure. They, I'm not sure. They There's a lot going on. There's a kid swimming, or is he almost drowning? Hopefully not. They said they're trying out cream slash tan sidewalls. Yeah, I'm, I'm digging them on this bike. Yeah, they're very <clears> nice. Um, very well presented. It's neat, it's tidy. No unnecessary accessories. It's in the correct gear. Cranks are aligned, valves are aligned. Um, super nice. Um, right, last bike. Real this Steel. Week. This yeah. is one in from Real Steel. <laughs> what is it? It's a, <laughs> I think it's a Columbus Steel. It says it's a Shamrock Cycles Fluid Druid. <laughs> what? Fluid Druid? <laughs> Am I reading that right? I have no idea. Someone will let us yeah, know. Yeah, it does say that. <clears throat> if that's correct, let me know. If I'm a complete moron, also let me know. <clears throat> um, Both could be correct. Yeah, thanks. Um, I like the bike. I, lo yeah. I love bikes from this era. They are very satisfying to look at, aren't they? Well, it's meant against the wall, but... Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you share your thoughts. No, I was just going to say, I really like the the brown saddle bar tape vibe. They've it's matched nice. the wall to the bar tape. They have, nearly. Yeah. <laughs> that way round. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I'll be honest, I can't see anything that I'm upset with. No, I like it. Part Super nice, are we? Beautiful. Right, that is it. The bike um, vault and the tech show is over. Man, it's been fantastic to have you on the show this oh, week. Oh, thank you very much for having me. I hope you've enjoyed my presence. I have. I've loved it. It's been a great fun show. Um, basically, don't need Ollie to come back now, do we? No. Just stay, stay in out, New Stay on Ollie forever. <laughs> um, right, we're out of here. Thanks very much. Um, be kind in the comments. Be kind to everybody. See you later.